there are three Ninjago realms that happen to be very similar. The Underworld, the Cursed Realm, and the Departed Realm. The similarity here is that all three realms hold the souls of people who have died. However, there are differences between these three, which we're going to discuss in this video. Hey guys, welcome back for a new video. So the first of these realms is the Underworld. It was introduced to the pilots. Besides Ninjago, it is the first of these 60 realms to be shown, and it's sort of like hell. The idea is that it's below Ninjago. The main inhabitants of this realm are the skeletons. And these people actually used to be alive. They used to be normal people. Tommy Drayson says they were warriors disgraced in battle. However, another official Ninjago website says that they were people who did not accept their deaths. Both of these explanations work. There are many ways to get to the underworld, but those are the ways you would get there by dying. And then you'd be reborn as a skeleton. The difference between this realm and the other two is that it's very easy to leave this realm. In the pilots, the skeletons enter and exit this realm multiple times. This isn't necessarily a prison in the way the cursed realm is, but more just a place where these people live and are unable to come to peace as you would in the departed realm. It is possible for skeletons in the underworld to die, which is what happens to Sabukai. And then we have the Cursed Realm, one of Ninjago's best realms. And from my understanding, there's two ways to end up here forever. Either you get banished while you're still alive, or your soul gets cursed after you die. The first thing happens to Garbada, the second thing happens to Moro. This realm seems like a prison. It's designed for its inhabitants to suffer forever, and it's almost impossible to escape, with the exceptions being Moro and Klaus. Similar to Sabukai, after the Cursed Realm was destroyed, all of its inhabitants went on to the Departed Realm. The Cursed Realm is kind of unique because it's represented by a living creature, the Preeminent. When the Preeminent died, the Cursed Realm was destroyed. This was the first realm in the show to be destroyed. I think the idea here is that this realm is for, to put it simply, bad people. The Anacondra committed war crimes, Chen and his army were cursed by those same generals for their crimes, and Moro tried to defy destiny. So that's the Cursed Realm, and the last one is the Departed Realm. This one is definitely the easiest to understand, it's the default place for dead people. If you didn't go to the Cursed Realm or Underworld after dying, you ended up here. There are a few very specific ways to access this realm, such as the T Sebekai gave Dr. Julian, Cole resurrecting the dead villains, the Odi Masks, and a large amount of Traveler's Tea used to resurrect the Preeminent. This is a very mysterious realm for us. We saw some of it in Kaiju Protocol. In Season 10, the first Minisu Master takes Lloyd to these grasslands, but it's not entirely clear if this is the Departed Realm. But there's not too much to explain about this realm. Any character who died and isn't in the Underworld has to be here. But that's about all for a look at these three realms. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to leave a like, subscribe, share with anyone and everyone you know. Share your thoughts on these three realms and what we discussed below. And I'll see you next time.